This is a slideshow about word order in Dutch. Word order in Dutch is a little bit of a resistant topic. You have to get your head round it and you'll find that it isn't actually as complicated as it may appear at first sight. To start with, I think it is important to focus on um, the pillar of the verbs. What I mean by that is that Dutch word order really pivots or centers around or rests upon, if you like, the pillar of the position of the verb. The verbs are the most fixed position in a sentence. Other elements can often jump around or, or occur in different positions, but the verbs very indeed. So keep your eye on the verb. I'll deal with three types of sentences. First, the simple sentence. Ik ga naar de bakker. Then the compound sentence. Ik ga naar de bakker en ik koop een brood. And then finally, complex sentence. It is complex on a, a number of levels, but it can the main clause and a subclause, but I'll get to that later. Ik ga naar de bakker omdat ik een brood ga. In this particular order. Okay, so we'll start with the simple declarative sentences. Now, these sentences can either have one verb or they can have more than one verb. Examples of one verb simple sentences are. Ik ga naar de bakker. I'm going to the bakers. Or Jane fietst naar het park. The verbs ga en fietst are on the land. You see that there's only one in this uh, simple sentence. If you have more than one verb, you will see that they incur in different places. The first one is second place. Je moet naar de bakker lopen. Jullie kunnen deze test gaan doen. So what you see is is that there's a verb in second place, you moet, of you can, and then the other verbs, if there's more than one verb, they will, occur, they will occur at the end of the clause or the sentence. Okay, so the rule is, if you have a simple sentence uh, with one verb, then you find that that verb will be in second place or second position. There's a first position, which is generally taken by the, by the subject, as in it. And bakker, ik is, is the subject. But that's not always the case, because of course you can have a sentence like, in an hour or so, I'll go to the baker's. So the first position can be taken on something else. But in second place, here it is, the verb in red. Position. At this point, I want to say something about what position means. Position is not the same as the second word or the third word. Um, let me give an example. If you have a sentence like Jane and her mother fietsen naar het park and we split this up into positions, then the first position will be her mother. Second position. The rest of the generic it could be long or not so long. And there is a final position which says verb final position, but that only is that's it only activated if there's more than one verb. So what I mean to say is that if I talk about position, then it's position of a word group, a, a word or a word group, but it doesn't necessarily mean the first or second word. A position is a little bit wider than that. Let's go to the simple sentence with more than one verb. First position, here come the position again. First position, second position is the conjugated verb. That's the verb that we saw uh, uh, in the simple sentence with one verb. Um, this is the verb that follows the subject. So, um, if the subject is ik, then it will have the ik form of the verb. Um, so, and we call that the conjugated bit of the verb. Then you have the rest, and in final positions are the other verbs. So you can clearly see here there's two fixed positions for verbs in a simple sentence. Second place for the conjugated verb, the one that follows the subject. Final position for all other verbs. Ik moet naar de bakker lopen. Jullie kunnen dit boek lezen. Hij heeft zijn vriend willen helpen. 
he had wanted to help his friend. And you see in that last sentence, there's even two verbs at the end. That doesn't matter. There's examples of, of sentences with three or even more verbs at the end. As long as the conjugated one is in second place, the others can go at the end of the clause or sentence. Here's another example. I want to make this very clear here. You can see the two pillars. The pillars in second place and, second, and the, the other pillar. Fine. Wij hebben in Rotterdam gewoond. Jullie kunnen deze test gaan doen. Okay. Here is a little thing to be aware of. Okay. When you start a sentence with an element that's not the subject, what you have to do is inversion. And inversion means swapping subject and verb. Let me give you an example. For instance, an important sentence, Ik hou van jou. Hey, I love you. Ik is the subject in first position. Hou, that is the, uh, the verb, so that needs to be in second position. And van jou is the rest. Now, I am so in love that I want to make it bigger. So I want to say with all of my heart, I love you. So first position is now not taken in by ik, but with met heel mijn hart. Now, the verb needs to come in second place. And that goes for this sort of sentence too. So the verb comes in second place, immediately followed by the subject. So this, whereas this sentence has ik hou, because this first place is taken on by something else, you have to follow it with how ik. So we swap the subject and, and the verb, and that is called inversion. Let me give you another example. Uh, de student gaat naar Jessup West lopen. This is the order. First place is the subject. The two positions of the verb are very clear again. But now I, I start this sentence with the, verb, with the word morgen. Uh, and in order to keep the, the verb in second place, I have to do inversion. I have to swap these around. So, morgen gaat de student naar Jessup West lopen. So, inversion is one of those little tricks you have to do in order to keep the verb in second place. It doesn't affect the rest of the sentence. It just means that if the first place is taken on by a non-subject, then the subject follows the verb because you have to do inversion to keep that verb in second place. Okay, so that's the simple sentences. We can move on to the compound sentences. An example is, I ate some spaghetti and I drank a pint of milk. Now you see that what's happening here is that you have two main clauses, namely, I ate some spaghetti and I drank a pint of milk. And they are linked together by the coordinator and. But you see that these are two main clauses because you could use them independently as well. I ate some spaghetti, makes perfect sense. Uh, I drank, makes perfect sense. So they are two main clauses connected by the word and. And and therefore is called a coordinator. It coordinates two main clauses. You see it like this. Main clause, coordinator, main clause. And what are coordinators in Dutch? Examples are, or in English, examples are and, or, but, so, and yet. Um, coordinators in Dutch are, and these are all the coordinators in Dutch, so that's quite a short list. En, maar, meaning but, want, for because, of, is or, and dus, means so. So if you use these coordinators, then at either side of them, you will have a main clause. And the word order in the main clause is like the word order in the simple sentence that I just said. So it is verb in second or in final position. Compound sentences are not difficult. People do them uh, without any problem at all. Complex sentences, on the other hand, require a little bit more awareness, I guess. Let me give you two examples. I like that color because it reminds me of my mother. Or, although I speak French, I think I should learn Dutch. Now, these are two complex sentences in English. And if you take the first one, then the main clause is, I like that color. And the subclause is, because it reminds me of my mother. A subclause can be recognized really by two things. First of all, it starts with a subordinator, something that creates a subclause. And in this case, it's the word 
because. But the whole thing itself can't stand on its own. It doesn't make sense to say, because it reminds me of my mother. That is not an independent sentence. If you look at the second one, uh, there you have the structure the other way around. So the subclause, it starts with the subclause, although I speak decent French. The main is, I think I should learn Dutch. And again, the main clause can stand on itself. The subclause does not make an awful lot of sense uh, if you took it as a full utterance, so to speak. So these two, because and although, are called subordinators. And English has another, uh, uh, there's, there's quite a few, but other examples are while, although, because, since, etc. Okay, I can understand at this point you want to say, why do I need to know this? Why is this important? The reason why it is important is because Dutch has a different word order in the subclause from the word orders that we've discussed so far. So in a main clause, is what we've done so far, you have the conjugated verb in second place, and all the other verbs in final position. And I'll call that now normal word order. I mean, I don't want to be too normative here, but that is considered the standard word order where the subordinate clause is the deviation. In a subordinate clause, all verbs are pushed to the end of the clause. So uh, there are words, so uh, subclauses have verb final, as they say. Okay, I'll give you an example. Here is a complex sentence of the structure main clause subclause. Ik denk dat jij naar de bakker moet lopen. The subject is ik, the verb denk in second place, and then the rest is taken on by a subclause dat jij naar de bakker moet lopen. The trigger of the subclause here is dat. The word dat is therefore the subordinated dat. Uh, then you get the subject jij and the rest, and the verb is kicked towards the end, or, or to the end, of the subclause. So if you see the two positions of the verb, here in second place, because that is a main, um, a main clause verb order, and in the, in the, in the subclause, here it is, at the very end, and there's even two of them, and both occur at the end. But nothing happening here. All the verbs hop to the end. Okay, so examples of coordinating a subordinating conjunction, so those words that trigger verb final, that kick all the verbs to the end of the sentence, is for instance dat. Hey, that's probably the most common one. Ik vind dat de mosterdsoep te zout is. Dat, this whole bit, dat de mosterdsoep te zout is, is the subclause. And is, is kicked to the end. It kicks to the end, very much omdat meaning because ik ga naar huis omdat ik ziek ben ben at the end normally you would say ik ben ziek verb in second place but omdat triggers verb final and voila there it is als means if or when ik doe de boodschappen als jij dat wilt I'll do the shopping if you like and again verbs at the end terwijl means while Jan kookt terwijl Peter de kinderen in bad stopt. Verb at the end, because this whole bit is the subclause and the verbs are kicked to its end. Other subordinators, uh, we will come across very many, because there is, there is, like in English, quite a few, but to give some idea, zodra, zodat, hoewel, nadat, toen, voordat, everything to do with dat is always a subordinator. And in fact, you know the coordinators, en, maar, of, want, en, en uh, dus. Hè? Those are the coordinates. They link the two main clauses. So all the others are always subordinated. So all the others always kick the verb to the end of the clause. Okay, so the word order, again, this is to repeat, in a main clause, subclause situation, is in the main clause, verbs in second place. And then in the subclause, you have the subordinator, plus whatever the rest is, and then verb at the end. Ik vind dat de mosterdsoep te zout is. Here they, they're all at the end. Ik ga naar huis, omdat ik ziek ben. These, the subordinators, trigger it, and whoop, the verbs are at the end of the clause. 
Now this one is to watch, as, as similar to what we said, what we saw in the um, simple sentences. But it's also, of course, possible to start a sentence with the subclause. Remember, this is the structure. Although I already speak good French, I think I should learn Dutch. So you start your sentence with the subclause. And this example is: Als ik te laat ben, mis ik mijn trein. So this whole, the first position, all of it is taken on by als ik te laat ben. The first position is taken up by a subclause. It could be the same as morgen or over drie minuten. Yeah, that first position can be taken in with all sorts of things, but here it is a, a, a subclause. If that's the case, remember we said inversion. So here we go. Miss ik, you see that the verb and the subject have been inverted. So the inversion, the, what we talked about earlier, also applies here. To put it in a tree structure, als ik te laat ben, mis ik mijn trein. Yeah, so here you go. The first position is taken on by the subclause, als ik te laat ben. Here is the subordinator, als. All the verbs are kicked to the end of the clause. But then you have to have the inversion, so it's followed by the verb. Subject, this is the inversion, mis ik mijn trein. Okay, it's worth noting, it's two things to remember here. First, that if you have a subclause in first position, you have to do inversion. So you have to swap the verb and the subject in the main clause. But what you get here is actually two verbs following each other. Here you go, ben and miss. And they're both conjugated verbs. Uh, but they clearly belong to different sections of the sentence. Als ik te laat ben, mis ik mijn trein. So you you can hear it as well. There is a the, there is a different way. Um, there is a pause, but also the intonation indicates that als ik te laat ben is one cluster. Mis ik mijn trein belongs to a different cluster. Hence the comma, and we call this oh. I'll go here. We call this the verb, comma, verb situation. So if a sentence starts with a subclause uh, and the verb is at the end of the subclause, you have to have the comma to start with the verb that is actually the inversion of the main clause, if you like. And this comma is a must. Let me go back to a structure. Here you go. You'll see it again. The first position is taken in by the subclause, omdat ik te laat ben, or als ik naar Parijs ga. Oh, that ga needs to go, actually, it's a mistake. Als ik naar Parijs ga, it should be. Then inversion, mis ik mijn trein, of wil ik de Eiffeltoren zien. So note that in this sentence, the subclause main clause, so this first position is the subclause, but the verbs still stay in second position and in final position if there's more than one verb. So the two columns of second and final are maintained here. Verb, comma, verb, I've said it. Hey, that's the end. Well done, that's the end of the whole thing. Although there's one PS and it's about prepositional phrases. Now a prepositional phrase is something, a short phrase, um, that involves a preposition. For instance, on your bike, or under the table, op de fiets, onder de tafel, met de trein, om vier uur. So a prep phrase starts with a preposition, om, met, op, onder. And the rule is that a prep phrase may follow a verb final position. Doesn't have to. You can always put the verbs in final position, but it is possible and you may come across a verb, a, a prep, prepositional phrase falling outside uh, that final position of the verb. And here's the example. Ik denk dat ik met de trein naar Parijs ga. Dat ik met de trein naar Parijs ga is de subclause. Dat triggers it. There you go. Ga at the end of the sentence. And it, it contains a prep phrase. Met de trein. Now it is also possible to say. Ik denk dat ik naar Parijs ga. Met the train. So this prep phrase can fall outside that final position of the verb. 
But don't worry, you don't need to apply this as long as you recognize it and don't think that the whole system has gone to pot. It has not. It is generally second and final. Those are the two positions. And remember, in a subclause, it's always a verb final. Thank you very much.